Hi, good morning. This is Jesse from Reserva. Uh, today I'm going to show you how you can set up uh, Reserva for your music school so that you can offer private lessons, um, group lessons, and also um, rent studio space if, if that's something that you offer. So let's get into it. Um, this is the first screen that you'll see once you sign up for your trial at Reserva.com. So I'm just going to uh, walk you through the initial setup. Um, it should take about five minutes to get things going. Um, so we're in Toronto, Canada, so um, I've just inputted this in here. Um, <clears throat> on the schedule, clients can book every 30 minutes. That just means that um, on your booking widget, uh, let's say you open at 9 a.m., um, your clients will be able to book with you at 9, 9.30, 10, 10.30, etc. And this is the first day on your schedule, so I'm going to leave that as Monday. I'm going to continue here. Um, the first thing we're going to do is set up some services. And I'm also going to set up some service categories, but I'm just going to start um, with with services. So um, let's add our first service. So I'm going to call this intro to piano. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up the private one-on-one -on -one lessons, and I will get into the um, to the group. To the group bookings uh, a little later but um, yeah for now we're just going to set up our, our private lessons so i'm going to say that each lesson is one hour um, <clears throat> i will add a cost just to just to have something in there but um, that is that is an option as well um, so let's just say that that is a 50 dollars service save that out another service here. Intermediate piano. I'd make that one hour as well. And just to be consistent, I'm going to make that a $50 service. And advanced piano. Again, same duration and cost. But again, that's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to add another service here, guitar. And I'm just going to stay consistent here. Oops, I forgot the cost. I'm going to save this first, and then I'm going to add my cost to this one. OK. Um, I may as well just add some more here. I'll just set up three different, cat or three different uh, class types and try to get through this as quick as possible here. Now, these may not be totally, um, you know, great examples of what services you offer, but um, I'm just trying to get something that you know that may that's consistent and and makes makes sense here. So. Again, these are all just one-on-one -on -one classes. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, um, I've got my three kind of um, categories, but what I need to do is create those categories so that um, our booking widget um, is a little easier to, you know, to navigate. So I'm going to add a category called piano lessons. Save that. I am going to now add the three piano classes to that and just click done. 
I'm going to add another one called Guitar Lessons. Save that. Add or remove services. I'm going to add my guitar class or uh, yeah, classes to that. And last but not least, vocal lessons. Okay, so that's good. Um, so these are, again, these are just the, the three uh, categories of one-on-one -on -one classes that we offer here. Um, so next up is to add your providers. Um, so these would be the instructors or the, or the teachers. So let's add, let's start adding. Now, here is where you differentiate the services that each of your providers offers. So if I was to uncheck, I'm going to save this out, first of all. If I was to uncheck this, um, here is where I see all my classes, or yeah, all my services. Um, sorry, I'm referencing classes, but they're, they're services. Um, so if I only wanted Peter to offer, if he was the piano instructor, let's say, I would just click on these three. I'm going to just leave them all, each provider I make, I'm going to offer their all services for them just for the meantime, and then I can fine tune that um, later on. So I'm going to add another provider here, offer all services. Save that out. Now I'm just adding enough providers for my examples so that we can, you know, have enough people on staff to offer all the classes and the services that we want to offer. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm adding so many off the, you know, off the, uh, at, at the start here. So I have five providers. Um, I'm happy with that for now. Again, I can always fine tune these providers and I will show you how to, um, you know, uh, fine tune their bios and and you know get get into each provider but this is just the initial setup and last but not least is our schedule so this is where you basically what your your opening hours so your general hours um, we're going to be open seven days a week and let's just leave it at 10 to 6 Monday to Friday and Saturday will open a bit earlier um, and we'll probably close a bit earlier too. So let's do nine to five, um, Saturday, Sunday, and 10 to six throughout the week. Now maybe that's not realistic. Maybe we will be open a bit later. Um, let's close at nine throughout the week just cause after school we'll have lessons um, and our studio rentals will probably run a bit later. So your hours may be, you know, different than these, but this is just, uh, just a setup here. So, or just an example. So, um, now I'm going to add my providers to the schedule. So I'm just going to quickly add them, add all my providers to every day of the week here. Now, probably not realistic that each of your instructors are working seven days a week. So we can fine tune that as well. Um, okay. If you wanna um, customize the start time and the end time uh, for your providers, just click this green pencil button and you can um, set up individual start and end times. So, you know, this Peter is not gonna be working from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Monday to Sunday. So um, that's probably not realistic. So he'll probably do a 10 to six. Um, again, I'm gonna leave this for now. And then I wanna set up my, um, my group services after that's done, then we can fine tune the schedule. But basically this is your schedule setup. Um, you're open seven days a week from 
10 or uh, yeah, 10 to nine on Monday to Friday and then nine to five Saturday, Sunday. So I'm going to continue on that. Basically that's your, your initial setup. So if I want to start accepting bookings, I'm going to have to turn myself online, which I do that here and up here. Um, this has gone from offline to online. So right now you're able to take bookings. Um, complete contact information. I'm going to do that later. So this is what your schedule looks like. So when you log in as your as the admin or if your providers are logging in to see their schedule, this is what they're going to see. So this is your day view. Um, yeah, so this is basically just your op you know, open to close. Your booking, you're able to book every 30 minutes. So that's, you know, 10, 10, 30. So these are each, each of these squares represents a opening, um, uh, an opening appointment. So <clears throat> yeah, this is just the, uh, this is how you um, scroll between days. If you need to pick an individual day on the, you know, on the calendar, if you want to jump ahead, you can do that. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to jump back to today, five providers you know, 10 to, 10 to nine there. So, um, yeah, let's, let's fine tune our, our, um, our schedule a bit here. What I want to do is I want to set up some studios. I have two studios that I want to rent, be able to rent as well. So I'm going to have to set up providers for them so that they're bookable. So I'm going to go back into manage providers. This is your, how you manage um, the aspects of your reserve account. So if you need to manage your services provider schedule, um, you know, et cetera, this is how you do it. So you'd go just go into manage and then you can uh, dig further into it. So these are my five people. Now, if I want to fine tune or get into each provider, I just click this three dots navigation on the side here. That's kind of our sub nav for, if you see this anywhere, on Reserva, then you can, um, you know, go further into into it and edit it. So, I'll just quickly show you the settings here. So this is Peter's um, Peter's setup here. Uh, you can add a bio, which I will do. Um, actually, first let me show you what it looks like from a customer's point of view. So, I have logged in as a customer. Um, but this is before we set up the services or anything. So I'm going to just refresh this. So you can see that my, the services that we offer, the lessons are organized by category. So if I go into vocal lessons, I'll see my three, um, my three services here. And I want to book, let's say Friday. Now I've made all my <clears throat> providers offer um, vocal lessons, I believe is what I chose. So this is probably not realistic. You'll probably just have one or two people doing that. And because there's nothing on the schedule, uh, Peter's, you know, wide open. Um, so yeah, each each time is, a, is an hour service. So the last available booking time is 8 p.m., um, which, you know, which makes sense. So that's what it looks like from a customer point of view. If you are testing your admin account and you want to check what that looks like, then you will need to, you know, and you want to stay logged into your admin so you can keep working on it. Um, you'll need to open your Reserva um, URL in an incognito or a private window. Um, and that will allow you to, to see the front end and still uh, stay logged in. So. Let's go back to our admin here for Peter. Um, if you wanted to change when the first booking date would, uh, when he's available. So if I didn't want to allow Peter to be booked on the same day, like, so today is Wednesday. If I wanted um, a day's notice kind of thing for my first booking day for Peter, I would change this to one day. So now Peter is not, if I save this out, which I will do, Peter's not available um, until tomorrow, so his um, his calendar would would just not he would just not be on the on the schedule for today. Um, now, if I wanted to 
limit the you know time in advance that people could book so if i just wanted to let's say have um, peter on the schedule for a month at a time i would change this to four weeks and yeah peter would not be able to be booked um a month uh four weeks and a day from today's date and that changes every day so at 1201 you get a new day on your schedule um so save that out and we'll do a quick test just to see what that looks like and i'm going to do a new booking here So if I choose today, which is Wednesday, Peter is not available until tomorrow. So that's that's what that looks like. So the first booking date is one date. Now, if I go to, a, again, a new booking and I choose two months in advance, you can only book with Peter until March 14th, which is the four week window that we set up for Peter. Now we haven't touched any of the other providers, so they are still bookable um, indefinitely. So that's the first booking day. I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna just change this, or sorry, go back to uh, so that I don't confuse myself later on. But um, if you wanted Peter to be able to be booked, you know, if he is a very busy, um, you know, uh, provider, he's a, a very busy coach, um, instructor, then he could have his <clears throat> his current client list um, just bookable so he wouldn't be able to if he has this checked off he wouldn't be accepting new clients and his clients would be given a code um, so that they could book in with Peter and then any new clients are just not able to book in because they don't have that code um, status Pretty self-explanatory if you wanted to you know have an active like if he was only active from say Peter's coming in as a guest you know vocal coach um, for a month you could set that up so that he's only available from let's say tomorrow um, until March 14th um, and you would just do that by clicking on the calendar here um, service options so if you wanted to add a custom duration or a custom cost to Peter's services, you could do that here in the service options. Um, <clears throat> this is great for somebody that's, you know, maybe more specialized and is very in demand. It's also great for, you know, someone that's just learning or that takes a bit more time for their services. Um, in our case, it probably won't, um, you know, this probably, you probably won't use this because the class you know the instruction is a set amount of time and you know that's kind of predetermined so there is no extra time generally for um you know for the for the classes i might be wrong about that but i feel like this you know you could use this all you want but maybe for the lessons that are you know set to 30 minutes or sorry set to one hour um you know you just leave it as is but if you wanted to change it, you could do that here. Let's say Peter only did intro to piano for two hours. Change this to two hours. Breaks are <clears throat> handy for, you know, lunch breaks for your staff. So if Peter wanted to take a break every Monday from two to uh, three, let's say for lunch, um, you could set that up and that would take effect every, let's start that today and let's just add a two week gap or two week break there i'm going to create those breaks so that was on mondays <clears throat> so i'm going to go back to my do a new booking always refresh if you're testing always make sure to either do a you know shift uh, shift refresh or a uh, a new booking here so that you get a, a fresh load of your of your account so that was a Monday, I believe, 2 p.m. So Peter should be blocked off. So you can see here, because it's 30-minute uh, bookings, so at 2 p.m. He's, he's off until 3, so his next available um, slot is 3 p.m. So that's the, the breaks there. <clears throat> 
images, you can have an image for each of your providers. Um, I don't have anything you know set up right now for this, but uh, just make sure it's a square image and um, you will have the opportunity to see Peter's image and bio. I don't remember if I added a bio for Peter. I didn't. So why don't I just do that quickly? Just to show you what that looks like. So I have something just written out here, kind of cheesy, but save that out. And again, refresh that. So that's where the bio appears. So what I should do now is probably fine tune what providers offer what services and also, um, you know, decide when they're going to be working on the schedule so that the our booking widget is a bit more realistic. So I'm just going to say that Peter and Stephanie are the piano instructors. I'm going to say that John and Mark our guitar and I'm going to say that Nicole does vocals you know what I'm going to say Mark does vocals too just to it's good to have two providers because we're open seven days a week um, it makes sense to have two um, two people covering those, those lessons. So, you know, if you're a busy, if you're a busy school, then you'll probably have, you know, uh, many more providers and you'll probably have, let's say like three, three teachers, um, offering each, each, uh, type of lesson, but you know, we have five providers, so let's just, um, you know, let's, it'll be a little bit more basic, I think here, but, um, it's still pretty realistic. So, uh, just to just to overview that, Peter and Stephanie do guitar, uh, piano. John and Mark offer guitar. Mark also does vocals, and Nicole does vocals as well. Um, so let's say that Peter works Monday to Friday. He is off on the weekends, and let's give Stephanie her weekend on Monday, Tuesday. This way, you know we have. Um, somebody covering uh, piano, uh, you know, throughout all, all seven days that you're open. Let's do the same thing for John. Um, let's give him the weekend off. Um, let's make Mark have Wednesday, Thursday off. And Nicole is vocals and Mark, Mark is vocals as well. So let's say Nicole does um, takes the week or takes Monday, Tuesday off and covers that so that there's somebody covered for vocals uh, Wednesday to Sunday and somebody for Monday, Tuesday as well. Now, if Mark gets booked up for, <clears throat> uh, I believe, guitar, um, he offers guitar and vocals on Monday, Tuesday. If he gets booked up for guitar, you know, 2 to 2 to 3 p.m., then there's going to be nobody available um, to cover that. So, you know, that's fine-tuning your, your staff schedule and just making sure that, that you're covered so that you're not missing out on any bookings. But this looks pretty good for now. Um, now, if we go to back to our, our instance of Reserva here, if I go to vocals, let's say just piano, and I go tomorrow, you can see that Peter and Stephanie are the only providers that offer those um, offer those services. Now, if we go to Saturday, so Peter's off on Saturdays, so Stephanie is our is our choice for that. So we're open to nine to five. Last booking day or last booking slot is four p.m. If you were to change your time settings to thirty minutes. Uh, sorry, if you were to change your time settings to um, 
uh, one hour, then it would just be 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. Now these are one hour services, that's why the last um, available service is 4 p.m. If we change that class to 30 minutes, the last um, time slot would be 4.30. So let's go back here though. What I want to do now is set up my studios. So I'm going to go into my services and I'm going to create another service called studio um, room room one hour booking. So this is going to show that on the on the widget it is a one hour booking per per uh, appointment. So I'm going to save that out. I'm going to make sure that that's one hour. I'm going to say that that's hundred dollars and save that out. Now what I want to do is go to my providers and I want to set up two providers. So I said initially I wanted to set up two studios and this is where I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have studio A. I'm going to save that out. And I'm going to have Studio B. I'm going to save that out. Now, this is important. Studio A and Studio B can only offer the studio room bookings. Now, I need to add them to my schedule, which I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to make them seven days a week because they're just rooms, they're not people. And I'm going to go see what that looks like here. New booking. Now you can see my studio room is, now this isn't a category. That's why I'm seeing my um, service duration here. Now, I didn't need to add this one hour booking here. It, it is here, but I just wanted to, you know, um, show that that was one hour to, in case they didn't see that. Now, it's not as clean, but it's effective. So I know I want to book a studio. I know I want it on Saturday. This is where I choose which studio I want to book. So let's book out Studio A at 9 a.m. It's a one hour booking. I'm a customer, I'm logged in. So I'm just showing you what that looks like from a customer's viewpoint. This is me making a booking here. Um, if I want an email reminder or a text reminder, I, I apply to those options here. Uh, I'm going to leave that off and I'm just going to, oops. So if I go to my schedule, I'm going to see here that Saturday I have a new booking. So you're going to be seeing that when your appointments come in, you're going to be seeing, <clears throat> you're going to be notified here. You're also going to be notified um, via email that you have a new booking or a cancellation. Um, but I will get into that a bit later. So let's just go to Saturday. I see here that this is my booking. And I see here that John Doe has booked Studio A from 9 to 10 a.m. on Saturday. Um, if I want to view this, the service name, I can do that as well. So this just shows what service I have, and this shows the customer name. And this just has my, my uh, my phone number here. If I want to see more information about this booking, I would just click on the appointment, um, and I have quite a bit, of, quite a bit more information here. So, if John doesn't show up, if I don't show up for that appointment, um, I can mark them as a no-show, and I can set up, you know, I can block him from 
<clears throat> you know, whatever your policy is uh, on no shows, um, you can, you know, end up blocking them. So you would just mark, mark them as a no show. I'll just go ahead and do that now. This becomes red. And now what that does, if I go to client and I go to my client list, I can block them from booking. So this email address would no longer be able to be blocked. Uh, sorry, would no longer be able to be booked. Um, so I can block them here, but I can also undo that as well. So I'm going to just go back to my schedule. Go back to Saturday. <clears throat> and I can undo that if they show up, you know, 15 minutes late, then, you know, they're forgiven and they are no longer uh, considered, you know, somebody that's no showed a, a previous appointment. Um, I can also apply a discount to that person. So if I need to, you know, knock off some money, they're a friend or I can choose percentage or amount, dollar amount. Um, I can do that here. So if they get a 20% discount because they're, you know, a great customer, um, I can add that there. And I can see that when I'm charging them for their service that they get a 20% discount. Um, you can view your client profile, you can edit the booking, you can also create a series of bookings. So if um, John knows that he's, he likes that studio, he wants it every Saturday from nine to 10 uh, for four weeks, then I can create a series of bookings for him. So um, repeats every, every, oops, sorry. Let's try that again. Repeats every seven days until uh, let's say he wants a month of that, then I would add them, add him in till March 10th. Um, so he's got three other bookings here. Now, if I go to next week on Saturday, you can see John is, is pre-booked there. So here, this was the day. Um, you can contact that client. This just gives them their, gives you their phone and, and email address. You can cancel the booking. Um, this is where your series bookings appear. If I need to cancel that, I can do that as well. By clicking this, uh, <clears throat> this, um, icon here, I can see which notifications were sent to the, or which notifications were, um, set up for this particular booking. So I can click that further. Um, these are, some of these are just the app, um, you know, doing its, its processes. Um, so the app was notified that there was a booking and that's where, um, you know, that, that red, that red, uh, indicator appeared. Um, once you get <clears throat> Once the app sends out its reminders, you'll see more notifications in this uh, in this status area. So that's handy. Um, if you have somebody at the front desk that checks in clients for you, that greets your clients, um, you can check them in, and your provider will be notified. In this case, you know there's no provider that's getting the notification. It's just a studio room, but. If Stephanie was with a with was with a student, and you know there was somebody that greeted uh, her student at the door, she could be checked in, and Stephanie would be noted or uh, notified that um, her new her new student uh, was here and you know in the waiting room or whatever. So you're going to be spending you know most of your time in this in this window in your schedule. Um, just, you know, looking at your appointments, your upcoming appointments and your days. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, this is what it looks like when a customer is booked a time slot with you. So what we've covered so far is just setting up your teachers and your studio rooms. Um, and just what that looks like from a customer point of view. Um, what I want to do now is set up a couple of group services so that if you had group lessons, you could allow uh, more than one person to book with you um, at the same time. And you could, or you could have, you know, up to 
50 people book the same room or sorry, the same service uh, for that for that duration. So probably not realistic. You'll probably keep your classes <clears throat> fairly small. But if you wanted to have, you know, 50 people, you could do that. But more realistic, it's probably limited to maybe six or eight students at a time. So um, what we need to do for that is go into our settings. Um, Sorry, bear with me here. Enable group service management. So that just means that we can now set up our classes. So that's under services, sorry, settings, um, app settings, and then services. So that's checked off. Now what that's gonna do for us is it's gonna open up our group services here. So what you need to do for your group services is start by setting up a template, which I will do. Um, and I have a couple scenarios here, which I will just copy and paste in there. But um, so my first group service or my first, you know, group lesson, I'm going to call group piano program for kids. Um, I'm going to allow clients to book more than one slot. So if you know, two siblings want to be in the same class or um, a parent wants to you know book like three of their um, kids friends at the same time they can do that so I'm gonna call this a class my other options are sessions event or tour but this is a class so I'm gonna leave it as class I will put a service or a, a dollar um, a cost there and I will add a description to that as well. And I'm going to save this out. So basically what I've done is just set up a class with the ability to book more than one person at a time. Now, the next thing I need to do is add this to my schedule. So let's just say that I want to add this um, I'm going to just keep it on the weekends. So I'm going to put that on Saturday the 7th or Saturday the 17th. I'm going to make this um, right at early morning 9 to uh, let's just say that this is a um, two hour class. Well, it's $50. So let's just say it's an hour class. I mean, it is for kids. So, you know, it'll probably be no more than an hour although hmm, anyway that's up to you guys but I'm gonna make this an hour class I'm gonna say that it's limited to uh, eight people and I'm gonna say that Stephanie is there's only four people working or there's only three providers working on the weekend um, so what I should probably do is set up some more providers that are going to be um, doing these group classes. For now, though, I'm just going to um, select who is available to me at the time. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to say it's Stephanie. Now you'll, you know, you'll probably want to add those extra people um, so that you can offer the one on one lessons and the group services on the same day. But uh, just to keep it simpler, I'm just going to choose that Stephanie is my provider for this class. So that is um, this Saturday, the 17th. I'm going to say if I wanted to add another day, which I probably do, let's add her, let's add that class on Sunday, same time, same slots, same provider. So let's say it's a weekend, <clears throat> a weekend thing. So it's a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, yeah, just to keep it consistent, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, leave her Stephanie as the provider for that. So I'm going to save that out. Now what you're going to see is two classes here. Now what that looks like from a customer's point of view, new booking. This is the class. So you can see it's uh, the bios here, um, the name bio and the label that we gave it. So the only two days that that class is offered is Saturday and Sunday. So 
this is the class group piano program for kids nine to ten with Stephanie. I'm going to choose that. This is where you can choose more than one pe uh, more than one person. Um, let's just for fun. Let's uh, say that we want to book two people in there. It is individual <clears throat> bookings, so that's that's where the two the two booking details come in here. Um, I'm just going to request that. Okay. Now what that looks like from a management um, perspective. So Saturday, again, I have a notification here. And I have two of eight slots that are filled up in my, um, in my class. So these are my two bookings. Now I was logged in as John Doe. I made both bookings. That's why both of these appear. So, um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. This is the group group services, uh, you know, window. I can also add a person to that as the admin. So that's where I would do that. So somebody calls in, hey, I heard you have a great group uh, piano program for kids. Can you add my child? Sure, I can do that. I just add that person in here over the phone, and uh, this is what you would do. This is how you would add it, and that goes for any service. So if I somebody calls in, um, you know, you would just add. Mark offers all these services. So um, if I wanted to add somebody at ten thirty on Saturday, I could do that here, and I just add that person's information. I can also add them, I can search my client database to add them so that it fills in this information so you don't have to. Um, you know, so if you know your customers pretty well and it's like, hey, it's uh, it's John Doe calling. Yeah, sure, I can search you here. Now, I only have one client in my client database. This is a brand new account, but this information uh, does appear. This fills it out. And the appointment is is uh is in there so back to the group uh group schedule this is um this is what that looks like and if i wanted to add another class i would create a new template i can also add this class <clears throat> excuse me i can add this class to any day i just added it to two just to just to show you an example here but um i can add a new template I can call this, uh, you know, group guitar lessons. This is a class. This is a you know fifty dollar class. Now we do have a payment um, integration with Reserva. So you can take payments for all these classes and services, um, you know, during the booking process. I have not set that up, but I will show you how to do that. But for now, um, we're assuming that there's no payment. Uh, they just know it's fifty dollars. They'll be paying with their credit card or however, you know, cash credit at the at the um, at the school. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've set up another. Um, group class or group service called Guitar Lessons. I'm going to add this to my Saturday. Um, you know, I'm going to keep it simple. Now, Stephanie is not available because she is teaching another class, but Mark and Nicole are available. Now, here is your um, second class. So if I was to again refresh my widget, my group guitar lessons are here. Again I only added it to one day so that's that's where that is Saturday the 17th from 9 to 10 with Mark. So that's a group service. Um, so you're going to be editing your classes which is group services management and again that's just in management and <clears throat> you're going to be editing your one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, services or uh, you know classes lessons 
uh, individually, and that would just be under services. So there's two two areas to manage here. Um, yeah. So I did mention our payment option. So maybe I'll just uh, show you what that looks like, or how that's set up. If you go to settings, app settings, and then payments. <clears throat> right now, I don't have anything set up. So we are integrated with Stripe. Um, I'm just going to enable that. If I go back to my payments window, so what you do is you connect your reserve account with your Stripe account. Um, what that does is it allows you to take deposits or full payments for um, for your services. Um, it's a very simple, uh, you know, simple setup, simple to use. Um, <clears throat> but it's uh, it's a great way to you know collect payment. Uh, up front and you know it gets the payment taken care of for the, from the client, uh, customer point of view and it also um, you know allows you to get paid so um, once this is connected to a stripe account you can um, set up your percentages uh, if you just choose to um, to to take uh, you know a deposit and then they they pay the rest when they get there or if you wanted to take 100 percent and you can customize that per um, service as well. So if you have, you know, uh, an expensive service that you want to take uh, a deposit on. So if your studio rooms, <clears throat> for whatever reason, are you know very expensive, you can just set your studios to to take payment. Your studio rooms to take payment. Um, hopefully that makes sense without actually seeing the, the interface. But it, it's a it's a pretty simple thing here. So. Let's go back to manage. Um, we've covered services, group services, providers, the schedule, um, calendars. <clears throat> we have a um, calendar sync option with Reserva as well. So if I wanted to connect my um, Google Calendar, let's say, to my Reserva account, I can do that. And what that does is it allows you to um, you know, block off time in your Reserva calendar, which will block off time. So if you get a booking in Reserva, it will block that time off on your personal calendar. Um, <clears throat> and it works the other way as well. So if you if you add a, let's say, you know, a, a doctor's appointment in your personal calendar, it will block those, that, those time slots off in your Reserva calendar. Um, so yeah, if you it's a pretty it's a simple uh, setup. You just have to authorize your calendar to um, to connect with Reserva. So that's uh, that's another handy feature that we have right now. I have nothing set up. Um, we also have a <coughs> excuse me point of sale integration with uh, Vend POS. So if you are selling products at your studio or your or at your school. Um, you can take all your appointments with Reserva and you can send them to Vend, which will park park the order, and then you can carry on with your with your sale in Vend. So it sends your um, client info, it sends your provider info and your um, appointment info to Vend. So that's under POS. So that's something that uh, you know you can look further into into if that's uh, of interest to you. Um, your booking widget is what your customers see. Now this is for if you have a website and you want your customers to remain um, on your site when they're booking with you, then you can just embed this booking widget into your website. You just need to authorize um, your website to do that. So um, let's say you have a Squarespace site, you would just put in squarespace.com this is your height and your width of your widget, and you would just add that in there. You can customize um, the look of that widget if you'd like. So right now my background is white, but if I you know, wanted to change that up, I can do that here. And I can change the text as well. So right now I have white text, blue background, and my buttons are probably shouldn't be red, but Let's just say that this is uh, close to your, you know, more in line with your your school's branding. Then you then you could do that. Um, 
I'm going to leave that for now though. I just, uh, I'm going to go outside of that. If I want to add a logo to my account, which I do right now, it doesn't look the best. It doesn't, uh, you know, it's not great, but what I can do here is replace this with, with, um, with my logo. So I will go into settings and then logo and branding. I'm going to choose my header image. I have something set up here. I can also add a tagline um, if I wanted to do that. I'm going to leave that out for now, but I just wanted to show you what the what the logo looks like. So this is my logo, and if I do a refresh here, you can see it looks a lot better. Um, looks a lot better already. So that's your logo and branding. Um, this is my business address, so that if I open this, it'll open up in, uh, I believe, Google Maps. Yeah, Google Maps. So that uh, that's your brand settings. Um, admin accounts. If I wanted to add, let's say, Peter as an admin, um, I can do that. So what that does is it allows Peter to log into his um, into you know the account and manage his provider, um, you know basically see his schedule, see his uh, his upcoming appointments, etc. So you'll probably be doing that for your um, for your teachers. Um, so I'm just going to you know fake something out here, but Peter and uh, Peter at gmail.com you would be sending them an invitation email. This is just a fake account, so I'm gonna leave that, that blank, but I'm gonna create this admin for them, um, and I'm gonna show you how to connect their account so that they can receive notifications. So in admin accounts under Peter, I'm gonna to go to connected providers. I want to receive email notifications. Now I only want Peter to be checked off here. If everyone was checked off, Peter would just be getting bombarded with um, emails that aren't related to his schedule. So let's leave Peter um, as the only person checked off. So right now, if I save this, go back to connected providers, um, Peter will be notified when he gets a new booking um, and he will be notified when there's a cancellation as well. If I wanted Peter to be um, fairly lim or not fairly limited, but limited uh, to what he can, you know, do with his account, with his admin account, I would go into permissions and change, um, you know, this to limited access. And we have some options here that kind of restrict um, what Peter is able to see and do with his account. So you can limit, you know, client information he will just see on his schedule that he has a class, you know, or whatever whatever service he's been booked as, um, he'll just see that. He won't see the client name or email. Um, so yeah, that's, that's under permissions and it's under, or sorry, that's under admin accounts and then permissions. So why don't I quickly go through the, you know, the general settings here. Um, we're in Canada, this is Canadian dollars. This is related to my address and my location. Um, so that that's that pulls automatically. I could charge in US dollars if I wanted to as well. Um, first booking date. Right now, people can, um, can book with me as of, you know, immediately. So if it's, let's say it's 10 o'clock in the morning, people can book with me for 10 o'clock. If I wanted to change that, um, I would change first booking date is active. Now, it needs to be a variable date if I wanted to change it. Um, let's say I wanted, I needed an hour notification before, or not a notification, but if I needed an hour, bit, you know, uh, notice between, or when, when my clients could book with me, if I needed an hour, 
I would change that to an hour. So if it's 10 o'clock now, people cannot book with me before 11 o'clock. And I can change that, you know, pretty much to whatever I want here. So that every day that, you know, adds a new, um, it adds a new day to the schedule. So um, if I wanted to make it a first booking date as a fixed date, so if I wanted, if I'm not open yet for business and I want, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't want, I know that I'm not going to be able to, to service my, my students until, uh, you know, the 17th until the Saturday, I could change that to the Saturday. And I can also make that the first thing that my um, customers see on the, on the schedule. So they wouldn't be able to go back to, um, you know, to this week they would have to, they would see the 17th here. So maybe I'll just save that and, and show you what that looks like. Now we made that the first booking day of the 17th. So um, I can't book today, tomorrow or Friday. I can only book Saturday the 17th. Um, I'm going to deactivate that and just save that out. Last booking date works the same. Um, services, if you wanted to be able to book more than one service at a time, you would enable that. So your clients could, your customers could keep, um, you know, keep booking uh, individual services within the same, uh, you know, within the same booking. So if they wanted to do a class or a lesson from, you know, nine to 10 and 10 to 11, they would, they could do that here. These are just uh, what you see in the, in the widget. So if I wanted to hide the duration or the cost right now, the cost is hidden. If I wanted to show that, click that, um, we covered this, which is group service management, um, providers, uh, splits is just uh, if you have a business which um, take, gives a percentage to your provider and a percentage to the business, um, you could set that up here. Uh, I don't know how that would work in our situation, but I'm going to just leave that off for now. Um, provider selection. So that's if you do not want your people to, your customers or your, or your students to select which provider they, they choose. Um, you would you would uh, uncheck this. Force clients to log in. That just means that your clients need to have a Reserva account um, in order to book with you. Um, we recommend that you leave that on. Um, it just adds another uh, level of you know author or uh, um, just just in, ensures that your the customers booking with you have gone through and and authorized their. Uh, their account um, with a real email address. So that's just, um, we just recommend that you leave that on. You can take that off where if that's unchecked, they can just type in their name and their number and it will create the, the booking for them. Um, <clears throat> if you wanted your admin to approve each and every booking, you could check that on. That just adds another um, you know level of complexity, but uh, that is an option. And here's where you would, this is checked on automatically, but um, notifications go to, to the admins. So you could uncheck that and then you wouldn't, uh, your admins wouldn't be notified every time there's a, a note or a, a booking. These are all just, uh, <clears throat> um, just personal options. We do have a waiver. So if you wanted to add something in, to the, <clears throat> excuse me, to the booking process where your customers would have to agree to your waiver before they could, um, before they could confirm their booking, then you can, you can add that in as well. So if you wanted to say, let's say a no show, you know, two no shows and you're banned for life, then you could add that to your, uh, waiver. So you would go to manage, and then this is just a custom, <clears throat> custom field. Uh, input box and you could just add whatever you wanted into here 
and that would add it to the to the booking. So let's just you know. probably not a great example but I can add this to my confirmation email as well so that there's just a double um, they've seen it twice so I'm gonna add that in and I'm gonna go back to my make a new booking This is my <clears throat> this is my waiver, so this is shows when it's been updated, um, and then I have to click I have to physically click this button in order to make my booking. Um, I'm just I'm not going to do that, but I just wanted to show you what the what the waiver looks like. So they actually have to, you know, click to proceed basically. So I'm going to go back to my app settings. Um, I'm going to disable my waiver for now. Just uh, I don't need that in there, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Um, conversion tracking. If you have, uh, if you're set up for Google Analytics uh, on your, you know, on your web, on your business website, you can add your ID to um, to your Reserva account, and you can, you know, um, set up what you need to set up in in uh, Google Analytics. And start tracking your your bookings. Um, payments we covered. Private booking now. <clears throat> um, in our case, we won't we won't set this up. But if you wanted to make people log in before they could see your schedule, so that um, you know only customers who are who are your customers um, uh, would be able to to book in with you. You could set that up here. Um, if you needed to, if you wanted to add notes to your clients, um, you could do that. I'll enable that just to show you what that means. So I'm going to go back to my schedule. Hopefully, I didn't cancel my appointments. I didn't. Okay, so if I wanted to add a note here to John's. Um, profile I can add a note here so John is a great student <clears throat> you can see that I added this uh, today at 1002 so if you keep adding notes to here it will just create a um, you know a kind of a, a an, uh, an ongoing note Basically, one big note, but each each time you add something, it will add the add the date. So, um, so that's pretty much the the app settings. Um, I should go into clients and just show you. Um, so we have a Mailchimp integration. So if I wanted to connect my Reserva account with a mailing list in my Mailchimp account, I can do that. Um, <clears throat> it's a great way to get your, you know, customers. They have to agree to be um, added to that list, and that's done in the booking widget. Um, that's a that's an opt-in, but it's a great way just to you know keep keep your your Reserva clients up to date with, uh, you know. Ongoings at, at the school. So if you could set up, you could set up a list called um, Reserva, you know, Reserva clients in your Mailchimp account, and then just connect that one list to uh, Reserva, so that you know that your um, everyone on that list in Mailchimp is associated with Reserva. So you could, uh, you know, send them a notification or send them a newsletter, being like, you know, thanks for using. You know, online booking. Uh, you know, hope you're loving it. I, I don't know. It's it's a bad example, but it, it's just a way to yeah keep your um, you know your reserve of customers uh, in the loop of your of your business. So you can just connect with Mailchimp there. Um, this is your client list. It's pretty bare bones right now. Um, one person is booked, but 
um, as you get busier, um, this will be, you'll probably be referencing this um, quite often. So it shows you how many bookings I've made, um, you know, my, my information, any notes that I have, um, and then you can filter that as well. So that's the client list. You can create client groups as well. So if you wanted to create, uh, you know, something like friends or friends and family, um, you could do that. And you can give them a discount. So anyone on that list, you could uh, give them a 20% discount in this case. Um, now, there's no one, no one on here, but uh, I could add, add anyone I wanted to this list. And you can just create you know, whatever you need to create as far as the lists go and manage them that way. So that's under your clients. Um, we have analytics as well. Again, this is uh, going to be super bare bones right now, but you can get a, a you know a nice little overview of how Reserva is working for you, um, your revenue, your clients, services, which services are doing the best, um, you know. So that that's in our analytics. Um, we have a booking search as well. Um, you can do an advanced booking search. Again, there's you know, nothing today or tomorrow, I don't think. No. So, yeah, so on the 17th, I do have some stuff going on. I have people signed up for uh, my group services, and I have uh, a studio booked, and I have a um, guitar lesson booked as well. So you can do an advanced search, and you can filter that pretty nicely and also export that to a CSV. So if I wanted to really dig into my best services over the course of um, a year, let's say, and I just wanted to know, is Peter, you know, for example, um, which services is Peter, you know, providing the most? And, you know, I could do that by just filtering that. So I would just put in my start, end date, booked, So yeah, that's that's pretty pretty handy. Um, I don't think I've uh, maybe I can do a little bit more in here. So if I need to if I need to move a customer, um, I can do that. I can just click the move button. I click the appointment that I need to move and it highlights it up here. If I want John to be moved to Nicole at nine, I just click, uh, sorry, I can't do that because Nicole does not offer um, that service. I don't remember which service it was, probably Guitar Lesson. Nicole doesn't do that, so I can't move her there. But if I needed to move John down to uh, 1 p.m., that did not work. Yes, it did. Okay, um, so John's been moved to 1 p.m. on, um, we moved him from 10.30, I think, to 1 p.m. So that's how you do that. You just click move, highlight the class you need to, or highlight the service, highlight the appointment, sorry, that you need to move, and then just click in any open slot. As long as that service provider offers that service that you're moving, you can do that. Um, if I need to top, if I need to quickly book off some time, like so, say Nicole needs to run out for a, uh, you know, an appointment from ten thirty to eleven thirty, she doesn't want any bookings. I just click tap on and off, and these are no longer um, available. Um, if I need to edit my day, I can do that. So if Peter, let's just say Nicole needs to. You know, she's gone home sick. I can cancel her day or I can turn her off for the day and I can also cancel her bookings. Now, she doesn't have anything, but um, her customers will be notified uh, or her students will be notified that her, um, you know, she's she's gone or that her that their appointment has been canceled. 
So you can see here that she's no longer available. Um, if I wanted to see Peter's week, I would go from days to providers and then choose the provider I wanted to look at. So the default is all providers for the day. Um, but if you wanted to, you know, see how Stephanie's doing for the week, um, you would just change it to providers and then choose Stephanie here. Um, if you need, uh, you know, want to zoom in even further, you can do that. I just leave that at 100%. Um, if I need to search a client, uh, you know, I can do that here using the search. Now, again, not much is going to be there, but, you know, John Doe is there. Um, yeah, so this is the schedule. Um, like I said, you're going to be probably spending quite a bit of time in here. Um, services we've covered. Yeah, we're... So you can add, uh, one thing we didn't cover is our custom booking fields. So you can add um, a, any field you want. Um, you just need to name it and uh, make it active. So if I wanted to, you know, um, you know, offer my custom, offer my students a drink of their choice, I could do that. I could just call this uh, um, drink of choice or drink preference. Preference. Um, I won't make that required because that just means that they would have to absolutely choose something. Um, but I would just add that in there. So what that does is it adds that extra field to, um, to the booking widget. So um, if you needed to get any, any, any extra information from your customers, that's a great way of doing it. Um, and that's in manage custom booking fields. Um, so our notifications, uh, our customers get, uh, or sorry, your customers get no, um, get an email confirmation when they make a booking. Um, and you also get that. So this is the content that goes into the notifications. Um, so this, this, everything in the, in the curly brackets here is being pulled from Reserva, but if you needed to add something into your email, then you could do that. Uh, you could do that as well here. So you could just type in whatever you wanted in there. Um, maybe, yeah. So if their booking gets moved, they get an email. If they if they're canceled, they get an email. And once they've been confirmed, um, that's. So this is the just for an example. This cancel link is how your customers would cancel their appointment from their from their email. So something comes up, they need to cancel with you. They would just go into their email and click this link that's auto filled by Reserva. Um, we do have a text and email notification system uh, reminder system. Sorry, so the those go out the day before um, the appointment. Um, your customer will opt in for those. So, um, you know, text, email, or both, or or none. So those those go out 1 p.m. local time, um, uh, whatever, you know, whatever your location is, those are sent out uh, the day before. So that's an email notification just reminding you of your upcoming appointment. Um, Just reviewing here in case I in case I forgot anything. Um, billing if you need to you know upgrade or downgrade. Right now I'm on a I'm on a trial, so I'm you know I'm a fully I have a full uh, you know full package going on here. But um, this isn't a great example. But if you needed to upgrade or downgrade your package at any time, you could do that in under your billing. If you need to change your you know payment information or anything, that's that's where you would do that. Um, so I think that, uh, I think that covers what, uh, what I wanted to, you know, show you. So these are just to review, these are individual, um, one-on-one -on -one lessons. 
and these are put into categories. So these are my piano, piano lessons, guitar, vocal lessons. These are my um, group services, so my classes. So this is where um, people can book in more than one, um, more than one spot with you. And this is my studio room, um, studio room. So if I had, this has not been put into a category, but if I wanted to create a category called studio rooms, um, I could do that as well. But in our case, uh, we don't need to do that. This is where the, the choice would get made, so. Um, this is where your customer can, you know, look at their profile, see their see their upcoming bookings. Um, so you can see here that I've made quite a few bookings for the for the demo here. But um, yeah, this is where your uh, where your customers edit their information. Um, so I'm signed in right now. I'll sign out, and then I just come down here and I sign in to. Uh, into this, uh, into my account here as a customer. Okay, I think that uh, I think that covers it here. Um, thank you very much for for watching this. Uh, if you have any questions about setup, or you you know just have any questions about um, you know best practices, or if you want us to take a look at your account just to uh, you know. To fine tune it for you, we're we're more than happy to do that. Um, you can give us a call, or you can email support at reserva.com, um, or you can open up a chat on our on our website. So if you go to reserva.com, we have a, a chat window there. Um, yeah, so we're we're very accessible, and we're we're more than happy to to help you get set up. Um, if you you know if I missed anything that's crucial to your to your music school, then uh, you know, please let us know, and um, we can help you. We can help you with any questions that you have. So, um, thank you again for for checking us out, and uh, have a have a nice day. Thank you.